Hi there, this is going to be the second time I record this because the auto was messed up. I gotta take off my glasses because I'm close enough where I can see without them. The first thing is healer roll actions. This is actually really great. Anything that brings abilities lower at a lower level is absolutely chef's kiss. For gladiator and paladin, I don't really understand the need to add more self-sustain as I felt like it was actually pretty in a good place already. Maybe they're trying to bring it up to warrior, but again, warriors like the OP god of self-heal, but now it's paladin is just that much closer. They changed all of the iron will uh, enmity stances or tank stance from 10 to 3 seconds. So if you had like an oopsie during the dungeon and you accidentally turn it off, you're able to turn it on a little bit quicker. And that does happen quite often. Clemency, Holy Spirit, and Holy Circle now don't interrupt actions combos. Um, that's always a great thing when they add that to any job, so that's only going to make it better. So if you accidentally hit a Holy Circle or Holy Spirit on your cross hotbar or hotbar, it's now not going to interrupt or break your combo. Resquiat, Confidier, and all the Blade of Faith level 90 abilities um, all made better, uh, even better. I think they're separating Confidior with Blade of Faith. So now it's no longer a combo action, but a separate ability. Like I said, I don't get uh, the self heal part. This now adds like a 1600 potency self heal. Paladin never really had a problem with self heals, but I guess you're gonna make it even easier on your healer now when you're in dungeons. I think a cool thing they could have did was maybe do like a one-time party heal. Uh, that would help out the healer probably way more than the self heal for Paladin at later levels. Because a lot of these you don't get into level 90 anyway, so it didn't really matter too much. It'd have been different if it was at a lower level tanking or lo lower level paladin for these self heals. Warrior got a change to how the cone works. It's no longer going to be going to be a cone. It's going to be an AOE circle, which some people love, some people hate. I don't think it's going to change the overall job too much. Uh, some people like that the cone for warriors um, AOE GCD was extended out, I think by like three yams. And now the AOE circle is going to be a little tighter. So you're going to have to be a little closer, but it's going to be more forgiving for, I guess, people who didn't want to play warrior, which I don't know why you wouldn't. Inner release stacks are now only applied to fell cleave and decimate. This just cleans up warriors rotation. So you can't burn inner release on anything else. Great. Warrior was already great even a little bit better awesome dark knight had a tiny potency um debuff from um, flood of darkness from 130 to 100 and blood weapon did get grants uh five stacks of blood weapon effect so that's always really cool when they do the stacks because then you can use them as needed instead of having to worry about a very tight duration window and they increase the effect duration from 10 to 15 seconds so a cool buff for um dark knight the other cool thing for Dark Knight is you're getting your second AoE ability at level 40 now instead of level 72. I always make the joke that uh, Dark Knight gets their first one at like 8 and then the next one at 72. It just kind of didn't make sense. So that should be a DPS buff for level 40 and above because now you'll have obviously more um, damage to do rather than just spamming one ability. The tank buster for Dark Knight got a gigantic buff and now is probably one of the best ones in game. This is a great. Uh, Dark Knight mains are probably like over the moon. I'm not a Dark Knight main myself. Basically, you're getting a cure potency of 1500 and you're gonna get Undead Rebirth where it carries over the Walking Dead effect. It, it's just like a whole nother, you're getting invulnerability and a gigantic kill and whatever else. So that's really great. I think the problem with Dark Knight still not from a savage perspective i'm a casual player and i don't follow savage tier ranking too often for tanks specifically is that uh, dark knight suffers from a lot of damage mitigation issues for people leveling dark knight not so much level 90 dark knight so that still might be an issue but maybe living dead can now be worked regularly into that to be able to offer some more mitigation for dark knight gunbreaker got nothing it didn't really need anything uh level 90 ability uh i think something with catharsis that they use often uh it's like a 25 second cooldown it's awesome um i wish dark knights the blackest knight got adjusted to offer some sort of heal other than just a shield but yeah gunbreaker was already super great so it didn't really need much of a change anyway monk perfect balance can no longer be executed while under the effect of any beast chakra great i'm not a monk main let me know if that changes anything prothgard hairstyle number one to just overgloss uh dragoon uh shortened action animation for almost all the uh dive abilities which is 
cool. Shortened animation just means that you're not going to be animation locked, which is going to give it a little bit more flexibility in movement, which is always great. For Ninja, they got a lot of changes. Uh, Mug is now the increase to target's damage taken by 5%. Now, uh, it no longer Trick Attack. Trick Attack does offer increases damage you deal to target by 10%. So Ninja is getting a damage buff. The issue with this from um, some of the Savage Raiders that I talked to and chat with is that it now moves buff window a little bit because Trick Attack is was obviously a very big ability for all people in the party when you're doing Savage tier. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of testing and information that comes out in the next few days of what now is like kind of the best rotation for Ninja. Action animation been shortened. Um, Dotan Hake Mujin Satsu, something like that. I'm so sorry if I'm uh, mispronouncing. Uh, all damage buffs. Bavakakra has got a little of a debuff, but they did move the melee mastery from 84 to 74. I think it's really cool when they do that. Uh, they did it on a couple of different jobs. So um, that's always really great uh, to make traits a little earlier on that bring damage buffs. So I like Ninja a lot. So I think that's really cool. Might play it. Might give it a go. Samurai got a lot of changes, like uh, changes that I didn't even realize were coming. A lot of potency changes. Higibana, uh, Higanbana got a damage over time potency increase from 30 to 45. As long as this is the full action uh, over 60 seconds, which is gonna increase the damage potency by a lot or enough, I should say, to uh, kind of offset Kaiten a little bit. Kaiten was your 50% damage buff ability that you would pop pretty much between every gigantic skill so they've taken that out um, i'm guessing as they said for button bloat but i don't think that was really the problem for button bloat <laughs> it's all of the other buttons <laughs> So um, if you're a samurai main, let me know what that means to you. And they made all of the big samurai abilities. Um, Mandari Setsugeka, a critical hit, but lowered the damage potency. Kaishi Setsugeka, they lowered it by like 390, but then made it a critical hit. Ogi Namikiri and Kaishi Namikiri, they lowered the damage potency, but made it a critical hit. So from what I can understand from samurai mains, they did this to get rid of some of the RNG with critical hits for samurai and made the numbers a little bit more reliable. Some people prefer that, some people hate it. They rather have gone for the big numbers with RNG than having it be like a like a guaranteed type of a thing. So Reaper just got shortened animation, increase in Hell's ingress and egress. It, it, not really anything too big other than just animation lock stuff. Archer and Bard, if you play Archer and Bard and you use repelling shot, now be careful because you're going to be jumping a lot farther back. So don't jump off platforms like Dragoons do. Battle Voice no longer requires Mage's Valid Army's um, Payon or or Wanderer's Minuet to be active. Uh, this is great because it adds more fluidity to Battle Voice to pop whenever you can double weave it in and you don't have to necessarily cast Wanderer's Minuet first. And it's good for middle of rotation because Bard follows more of a guideline of rotation rather than like a super strict rotation overall for, you know, damage for the party and everything. Wanderer's Minuet, I actually don't like this change. I'm just going to say it. I liked that Pitch Perfect and Wanderer's Minuet were two separate abilities. Bard doesn't suffer from button bloat for controller players. I'm still probably going to keep both abilities se like separate because I have all my songs in one place and then I have um, Pitch Perfect and another that go along with like my rotation and make it easier to be more intuitive. So I'll probably keep those separate still. Machinist, it, it looks like a potency buff, but I think it only equates to like 1% or 1% to 2%. I know a lot of machinists are still upset like this. I, I don't know. All they're doing is getting potency buffs um, little by little, but I personally, as not a machinist main, would like to see more abilities. It's the opposite of all the other, a lot of other jobs that suffer from button bloat where it has a lot of open space for you to use. So I'd like to see more active abilities or more buffs for the party. They're just kind of making everything equal at this point. So I don't, I don't think this has too much of a, like it's not gonna change much at all. Dancer, I I'm just gonna say it, I have no idea what this is. Uh, they're pretty much just cleaning up some of the standard rotation um, and then they're changing the effect 
of uh, to Granton Silken Cemetery. Until I get my hands on this and be able to play with it and kind of do an updated like quick video about it, I don't know what this means until I can see all of the actions and traits together. Arcanist and Summoner, um, it looks like they got a really good damage buff to all the Ruby abilities. I think it equates to like two to 3% increase in damage buff. From what I understand though, Red Mage is still going to be doing more damage. Um, then summoner, but summoner was lacking a little bit. So maybe this will make up for like a small percentage. The big thing that I think for summoner is really cool is the searing light change. Uh, this is your party wide buff before it was cast by the carbuncle and now it's cast by you, which is going to make it less clunky because your carbuncle cannot cast your party buff ability for summoner unless you were in battle. So sometimes there would be some clunkiness with it because you want to cast it pretty quickly within the rotation. And now you'll be able to, if there's another summoner maybe in the party or um, trial party, that you're going to be able to have a better uh, layout of searing light and not overlap as much due to the clunkiness of the carbuncle. Red Mage, no changes other than action animation shortened. Displacement was always really clunky so that's cool white mage is now getting a huge change and these are huge i did a whole video dedicated just on the white mage changes i'll link that at the end of this um a lot of these changes a lot of people don't understand them and i will say here in this video a lot of these mp changes are for lower level white mage if you're a level 90 white mage you have not played low level white mage in probably a while consistently it suffers from mp problem mp management at low levels especially for new players who have who don't have the experience of it so uh, this is definitely for low level white mage players the lily and the afflatus misery it's awesome again i made a whole video about it just talking about that in discussion so go check that one out scholar mp reduction the fairy will now be working overtime embrace which will heal people with a longer range which is awesome sacred soil Effect, area of effect has increased 8 to 10. Expedient has been decreased from 20 to 10, which is kind of a bummer. I actually like to throw Expedient out right before a... <laughs> right before a mob dies and then you can run to your next mob really really quickly <laughs> so that was just for fun casual play uh and playing in a group but it was always fine astrologian got nothing other than an effect duration increase for its low level combust from 18 to 30 sage weirdly got more op i don't understand why uh dosis mp reduction which is just your gcd damage ability soteria got turned into stacks which now makes it where you can't waste it in the effect duration say if it was like 10 seconds and you were attacking now it's a stack and you can use that stack whenever you want and its potency has been increased to 50 to 70 so i i don't understand the meaning of it sage is already op at level 90 uh so maybe this is to help in that like level 70 to 80 range which can suffer a little bit if you're brand new to sage but i i think it's just now more op especially with the adder sting change you now have a full stack starting with when you start a dungeon okay now i'm even more op than i was before <laughs> so uh, it was never an issue, but great, you know? Other than that, there's just some trait changes and Hisatsu Kaiten being gone. Yeah, I think, uh, I feel like I'm not led into some like cosmic joke that Square Enix is saying or doing. Um, I don't really know where some of these job changes came from, like being a part of the community and forums and uh, Reddit. And a lot of these are kind of stumping a lot of other content creators as well as people who play the game. So I guess we'll see more when we can actually jump into the game and be able to get our hands on this and really see the effects and differences that it's going to make. I just wanted to gloss over as quickly as possible. It is a lot of job changes, but we'll know more in the coming days and weeks. I'm sure all the content creators are going to be working overtime to get that information for you guys. I hope this video was somewhat helpful for you. I'm finding that I'm having to watch multiple content creator videos in order to like truly understand some of these job changes so i'd recommend you guys do the same or just give it a few days and i'm sure we'll all have updated kind of like knowledge once we're able to play with the job a little bit i have all my links down below for my discord and for my patreon and for my twitch account want to find any of those you can find those down below if you want to watch more final fantasy guides and tutorials then you can click here